So it's Friday night, and Friday nights at Adafruit Industries means it's time to hack and reverse engineer a random piece of consumer electronics that we find. And uh, tonight, I'm going to be taking apart and investigating the innards of whoop, this now broken uh, Motorola Talk About Jazz. It's a little pager modem running at 9.9. Uh, sorry, 929.6625 megahertz. So um, basically these aren't really used anymore, but I want to see if there's still stuff being transmitted on the pager network, and I don't have a, um, a scanner, so I thought, you know, maybe I can open up the pager modem and get data straight from the radio. So let's start by opening up the back. I'm going to use my trusty Exolite Torx s screwdriver. So I took out the other screw earlier and uh, just remove the little battery case. You can use a nice screwdriver to gently pry it open. The big secret to taking apart electronics is to be really gentle. Most stuff will come apart. You just have to go slow. Okay. So we can see here there's the battery terminals. This runs on a single AAA battery. I'm just going to remove the battery for now. Um, so you see the pager modem. Here's a little piezo. And then I'll take this out. You can see there's the LCD. Um, this runs on a little battery. That's why it's still on. I'm trying to see where there's the battery. Ah, there it is, this little battery, backup battery. Um, this here is a loop antenna, so that's RF in. And then there's two boards here. I'll take these apart carefully as well. Let's see. So I'm being really careful here not to short any pins. Just go slowly. This is the most boring part of reverse engineering, is taking it apart without breaking it. Okay, got one half off. Okay, there you go. Okay, so let's look at what we have here. Um, so now you can see the pager modem, uh, the, the pager motor, uh, the loop antenna, and there's a whole bunch of analog parts here and passives, and you can see a little trim uh, capacitor or potentiometer. So this is the modem part. This is the RF receiver and also has the modem on there. And you can see little IF crystals that drive the um, RF decoder chip. And then on this part, you can see there's small chip, crystal, another crystal, probably a timer. If you look really closely, you can see that's a 24C08. So that's an, um, I think, 8 megabit uh, I2C squared EEPROM. So that's probably storing, you know, the um, unique identifier for this pager. And this is probably an LCD driver, or pager driver. One of these drives the LCD. Uh, usually there's a specialty chip just for that. And the other is, um, you know, the brains behind it. And the, it's the piezo. And there's a little voltage regulation going on here. Maybe this is a little boost converter. So the interesting stuff, oh, and here's the buttons. I'll just show the other side. You can see there's a the uh, connection, ribbon connection for the LCD, three buttons. It's probably one of the worst interfaces I've ever seen. Basically, you have to hold one button down for two minutes, and then you hold another button. It's like I'm not really clear how you could actually use this device uh, from looking at the manual. So um, let's go back. The interesting thing here is the RF modem. So you can see that the RF comes in here probably. Yeah, here you go. You can see it comes in here. There's probably some amplifiers and filtering before it gets to this chip. So, <clears throat> sorry, here. No, it's front-wise. So you can see it says TA041. And then on the other line it says 3114 AFN. 
So TA is probably the manufacturer or the logo for the manufacturer. 041 is uh, the date code. And then we have 31149. That's probably the part number. And AFN is um, usually the, any digits at the end are um, package or temperature or, you know, maybe another date code or, or in, indication of where it was fabbed. So, uh, of course, I took this part earlier and I Googled TA31149 to get the data sheet. <clears throat> so here is the UTC uh, TA31142 data sheet. And um, looks about right. There you go, you can see the part. So right number of pins. Um, this is an IF receiver IC, so that makes sense. You know, just, you want to make sure because sometimes uh, you may confuse part of the date code um, or um, other you know fab uh, notations with the part number. So try a couple different things, breaking up the part number in different ways until you um, get a good hit. So um, let's look through here. Basically, the interesting stuff with these. Um, sort of one-off chips. These chips are basically designed for one thing. This was probably designed just to um, drive Motorola pagers. Is on the last page, we can see uh, how this works. <coughs> so you can see this has um, a couple little things going on here. Um, there's a mix. There's an oscillator. Um, there's a little regulator, it seems, to it runs on one volt. So you can put in a higher voltage, and it has a little... Um, op amp that'll do uh, voltage regulation for you if you put a transistor on. Um, there's a amplifier, charge discharge, but you know, basically, here's the thing. I don't actually know RF that well, so I don't completely understand this, but what is really important here is I can see that data's coming in from the antenna and it's coming out through FSK. Now, FSK stands for um, frequency shift keying, and that's um, Basically, that's how the data comes in over the antenna. So this is actually going to be the data out. You can see there's a comparator. So it's one bit. That means this will be one bit data out. And uh, if you do a little bit of research about pager protocols, basically they talk over one bit or um, two bit serial. So in theory, we should be able to just read the serial data from this chip. So I'm going to put this back together and then we can power it on and probe at the chip and see if, in fact, there is data for us to read. So I've got the pager back together, and I've turned on my trusty Tektronix scope. And um, according to the data sheet, I want to be probing pin 15, FSK out. So um, looking at the screen while I do that, um, I connect my probe to that pin and you can see a whole bunch of serial data coming out. Now it's going pretty fast because uh, I just have it on normal trigger, but um, what I can do is now turn it to run stop and then try again. See, this is actually a little tough. Back to single sequence. There you go. Acquisition complete. So you can grab a little bit of data. And I can check it out. Looks like serial to me. So um, I have to figure out exactly what encoding this is, but it definitely looks like I got data out. So basically what's interesting about this pager is even though it's not activated, it's cheaper and easier for them to have the RF module always on and um, looking for messages and then seeing if that message is for the pager, sort of like Ethernet works, rather than having it filter um, at the RF level in some way or having it not turn on the radio if it's not activated. So it's interesting that you know, they wanted to make sure that they could uh, have a central control for what pagers were activated and how to send messages to them, so that's how they did it. So um, probably my next steps would be I uh, would figure out the baud rate, which I think is, I looked it up, I think it's 3,200. And then I basically connect to a computer and just look at what the data is and compare to uh, maybe a white paper on the flex protocol. 
and uh, see if I could sort of extract messages um, from this data stream and then uh, put it through a flex packet decoder. Um, there's a couple free ones online. So that's sort of the beginning of how uh, to reverse engineer a pager modem.